Alhamdulillah that Allah dressed us and blessed us with this holy month and the realities of Holy Qur'an for Surah Al-Qamar and that to teach us about the way of reflection and that to clean the inner character so that the outer reality can shine and that to take a path in which to follow the eternal light and the reality of the sun and that which is eternal and to reach to that. We talked last night a little bit about the reality of gravity and ish that what draws something from its pure divine reality is ish, it's a divine love. When we talk about love people are thinking from a physical. When Allah is describing that all this creation was created in love, that Prophet was describing that Allah created this creation from this ishq and this love. I was a hidden treasure wanting to be known, the secret of al-wadud. That ishq and that love, we said the inside controls the outside. The inner reality is what's important. When awliyaullah come and teach us in our lives from these realities of Sayyidina Muhammad it's always in reference to malakut and the soul and light. For Allah doesn't care for dunya like the wing of a mosquito. So to understand when Allah is describing ishq and love it's not from the physical. So it has the immense, immense reality of the soul that what draws the moon in its orbit, what keeps the earth in its orbit, what keeps all of creation on top of the earth and not floating away is that Allah put in within its atomic reality that this Divine Love. That when Allah saying, I created everything from love means that the real essence, not the, just the expression I created with love, it's the electrons they're given a love for the power that's within the nucleus and the center. And the, the center is positive and everything else is less than positive so you would call that negative. So you put the E and a line from the E to the center which we would call the positive and the powerful, the Divinely Presence, that which is powerful and, and eternal and pure. So when Allah want to create its essence and its light, forget about the physical, because the essence and the light is what's important. He put within that E and that electron that you're by your nature weak and you're not independent, you're dependent. And within its zat and its essence it has the love for the nucleus. It's attracted to the positivity. So then Allah gives that attraction. So if the guys have the, the image that we have of the mass attraction, the what you would call the circumvallation, centrifugal, centrifugal force that spins it and then as a result the rise that begins to lift. We have it on, on the articles for the sama and the whirling, the haqqaiqs that awliya were teaching. Each of these awliya were given a, a, a way and an understanding to bring out that reality. So they're teaching the core of this love when Allah is describing that, I want it to be known and the essence of this love, it's in the core of our wujud and our being, our essence. 
that these electrons and our, our, our reality is in its negativity because it's not perfect. That's why the only perfection of Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad That's why قَوْ بَقَوْ سَيْنِي أَوْ أَدْنَى Because perfection is your proximity to the Divine Source and Power. Anything less than that proximity is of a lesser positive charge. So as you go out, 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 out of course then you become negative in comparison to the positive. So it means that Muhammadan light and reality is right there at the center. The center of that is the power and the qudra of Allah that makes the nucleus. So Allah put within us because of our, our weakness and less than perfect is the desire and the love for that perfection. As a result it is with all its being attracted to the nucleus. Not the ego and not the form is of any importance. That when Allah has created this reality and truth and its reality is based on this Divine Love. Because of the electrons love for the nucleus and the pure love it begins to move because the magnetic force is so powerful it doesn't stay because it's not connecting it begins the centrifugal movement and that was the reality of the sama. They were imitating the movement of ishq and love until they could reach that Divine Love within their heart they would not stop the whirling understanding means they would imitate the electron. And that which is spinning is spinning so fast because of its immense ishq, its immense love. And then their awliya came and described that in their spin, in the spin of their wujud and their, their atomic reality their atoms would disappear. And where it would go and then how it would reappear. How long was it gone in that world of light and came back? Means the immensities of these realities and only then later science understood when they were observing electrons that they would vanish at times. The electron would be under observation, vanish and then reappear. Means the spin and the love is so great because what causes the speed of the spin? It's the love the attraction of the, of the electron to the center. When Allah increases the love means the himma and the zeal to want to approach. If there's no himma, yeah I don't care about that, I don't need to get it right now. But when Allah in the world of light for the soul which is pure because the nafs is what will pull the body not to understand and not allow the body to follow its own reality, everyone's soul is created by this reality. Everyone's soul has this love and it's spinning so fast as a result it begins the rise. So it's attracted, it spins and then it rises and that's why this life is but an illusion. So the hologram of this earth and everything around us, the wood, the floor, the pillows, everything is in a hologram. Because it's just atoms that spin fast and you've seen like when something's spinning very fast if you try to touch it, it feels solid because it's spinning so fast. If you slowed the spin then you would hit here, put your finger in and then when it would come again it would hit you. But when it spins faster than your movement you, you can't get any closer because it keeps rubbing you and it gives the appearance of something solid. That's why Allah in Qur'an says, this dunya is an illusion, I'm making it to spin because I put within its essence ishq and love. Because what does it matter the plant is the same, the planet are the same atoms, you are the same atoms, the plant is the same atoms, the ant is the same atoms. Means they all have the same structure of an atom, a nucleus and electrons. Its atomic reality 
is all spinning. So everything is created by that love and appearing now because of ishq and muhabbat. So what's in the center is Allah's Divine Love, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ this why quantum reality kuntum that Allah addressing in an ancient time, in an ancient light to the reality of Prophet He's not addressing a few people on earth that, oh you want, you want this, you want that, I don't care. Allah is addressing a haqqaiq from an ancient reality, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ Means that your wujud and tell everything in that world of life, if they want the Divinely Presence and the nucleus, fatabiuni, that come, that they must be coming to your reality. As a result all the order came for everything in existence, all of its electrons to come. Right? He's not giving a direction for me and you, our physical bodies, our ego says, I don't accept this, I accept this. This was an ancient command of how Allah formulated creation. That He commanded to the light, قُلْ إِنِي كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي Because the center and the nucleus is the Muhammadan haqqaiq and Allah's command and ishara to all the lesser light which are the electrons, fatabiuni. You are commanded by your essence to come and follow. So by that command in the world of light there's samina wa tana. We heard and we obeyed. As a result the electrons of all these lights are moving towards that nucleus and then Allah not so close. There's a distance, bayna, there's like a parda and a distance between you and this reality. And that reality in distance to its creator, qawba qawsaini wa adana. Even the reality of that nucleus keeps a distance as an adab from Allah's izzah and might. By the adab and following the understanding of qawba qawsaini wa adana because even the light of Prophet we never say collides with Allah As a result qawba qawsaini wa adana means two bow lengths or near. That with what type of power this attraction Allah put into the Muhammadan light to move towards Allah in which it want to completely collide and become one but its adab is not wahdat al-wujud. That's the reality and the, the power of Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah. The Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah kept the adab and the haqqaiq in which Allah showed to their awliya the Muhammadan reality. For if you take out the Muhammadan reality then you are a creation thinking you became one with Allah, Allah And that's why so many of them talked about becoming one with Allah, becoming one with Allah astaghfirullah. How can you become one with Allah when all their teaching is that between you and Allah Sayyidina Muhammad that you're no one to be one with Allah If you take out the Muhammadan haqqaiq and the shaykh doesn't teach the Muhammadan haqqaiq which other turuqs may have fallen into that understanding then they thought themselves approaching the proximity of Allah and not knowing themselves who they are and where they are. So means that there is no way into that reality. That reality is Muhammadun Rasulullah its inner core is making the tawaf around Allah 
And as a result of that ishq and that muhabbah everything is drawn towards the Muhammadan haqqaiq and then all the electrons are coming and Allah keep them like a qawb wa qawsayni as a distance from Prophet that even their essence wants to collide into the inner core of Prophet and Allah keep even their reality at a distance. So nobody reaches a full Muhammadan dress, there's only one Muhammadun Rasulullah Otherwise they would all reach into the complete fana but Allah keep their light even that at a ihtiram and a distance. Your knowledge can only encompass what Prophet wants to bestow. So even to their Muhammadan dress there's an adab and a distance into that. That's the, a strong force that Allah pulls all reality towards it and at the same time Allah then push another force that you cannot become one with it. That becomes the core atomic force inside our, our essence and our atomic reality. And as a result everything is spinning. All the lights within paradises as soon as they manifest they have a spin because those lights that you're seeing they're of an atomic reality. So they're spinning in their origin with the immense pure light and love. That's why the heavens is pure and purified because the angelic reality they are in a complete ishq and spinning. Their spin and their rotation, their ibadat is complete and clean with no nafs and no mulk, no dunya, no, no worldly form. As a result that's why the heavens is pure and purified that they're in a complete love, their attraction and their, their, their manifestation is the manifestation of pure love. That's our core reality. Then all the physicality and the physicality has a barrier between the soul which we call the ego, the nafs and the devil. As a result of that barrier it blocks the physicality from understanding its own reality and its own soul. And that's the purpose of that nafs and devil, to apply a negative force so that conveyance of love is not connecting. So we described that Prophet is tawaf around Allah all creation is tawaf around Sayyidina Muhammad in their core love and their essence of their soul all the heavens are in that manifestation. That's why we deem the heavens to be beatific and pure, it's just radiating pure love. Then the physical and the physical world of insan and the physical manifestation of, of these creatures is that their physicality is making tawaf around their soul but Allah allowed their nafs and a shaitan to get in between that. So that that nafs and shaitan is blocking their soul from their physicality and as a result their physicality is not sensing complete what the soul wants to communicate to it, what it wants to give it from its Divinely love. And the physicality deems itself something by itself self-sufficient, it forgot it even had a core that radiates power. It comes to the earth and because of the nafs and the shaitan that blocking it, it deems itself self-sufficient and throughout Qur'an Allah describes, you feel yourself, the arrogant ones they feel themselves to be self-sufficient. Nobody can touch us from the wealth we have, the money we have, the power we have, the companies we have and they forgot that Allah controls their inner battery, their inner existence. Means if Allah turned the love off 
this entire creation. If you turn just off on humans, they collapse into nothing and the form collapses. And he can keep the ishq and the love for the soul on and collapse all the physicalities. The physicalities would collapse and the souls would be there. That is the reality of the grave. Because when they go into the grave, the energy of the soul is still on, not the energy of the body. So the reality of mouth is what's happening. The soul is there, that's why there's two beings coming, the physicality and the soul. And that's why Prophet is describing, be careful because now there's two entities, one you're not familiar with. The body that you're washing, there's a living soul right next to it that's going to complain about how you treat that body. It senses and it feels, that was the isharat that wash with warm water, do things correctly, speak politely in that presence, that soul has a feeling and it's attached to that understanding of the body. So that we would understand that our soul is feeling and that the grave is the great shutting off, that Allah begin to shut off the attraction on the physicality. As a result it's no longer in a rise manifesting. You even see when you deal with those whom passed away, their physicality actually begins to wither away. They lose their size right away, all of their body is beginning to evaporate, all of their rise is beginning to go down because Allah gave its command that now their ishq, their, their spin, their life, the existence and manifestation is off. If Allah cut this attraction of the physicality it's off. There's no more spinning as a result the rise begins to collapse, you open and the body deteriorated. And there is nothing left of these atoms, this body, it became dust. Except those whom Allah grant them a hayat that they are eternal souls and their eternal soul is, is powered and their eternal soul is even eternally powering that physicality and their physicality is in a continuous state of ishq and love. It never Allah pulled the love from their physicality and they don't deteriorate. Their physicality has a freshness within the grave years after because the power of the soul is such a powerful reality dressing that, that physicality that its power still dressing. Allah's ishq on the body, Allah's centrifugal power on the body and Allah's rise on the body. So it's still in a state of manifestation because of its perfection of ishq and love. Means that we pray that Allah give us more and more understanding. This is a, a, a understanding towards the understanding of gravity, that that which holds you onto the earth, they want to explain things as a scientist. But more important is understanding through this Divinely light that this is an ancient Divinely light of love. Based on that love your, your pull and that which you gravitate towards and that you're, you're magnetically inclined towards is in the hands of Allah So means that this earth stays where it is. Because of Allah's command, its love and its understanding of what it has to do and it's in its love and its ishq and its spin. The moon is in its orbit by its love and its ishq, the sun is in its orbit by its love and its ishq. The immensity of the solar power that comes from the sun, its love and its ishq is a power that sends out and tells exactly the moon where it's supposed to spin how close it can come and how far it has to stay away. Everything is under that command of that moon, of the sun. So the sun is the source of ishq and love and it sends the gravitational command for the earth. Its distance and its proximity that it is to stay means that we described in Laylatul Qadr Salamun hiya hatta al-fajr. 
by the permission of Allah these commands are coming and the central power of our galaxy its understanding is the sun. That every command is coming from that ocean of light, meaning what? It tells the earth exactly what its sustenance will be, what its power will be, what its lights will be, what its blessings will be and where its orbit is to be and the movement of its orbit. Because if the central command is the power, it's like the video game, it's the one telling the earth what to do and where to go because that which is eternal is the power. That sun is telling the moon exactly where it's supposed to be, it's not aliens, it's Izzatullah. That sun when it want to send a punishment, it sends a flare from itself and you'll see a and they show this solar flare they say is reaching all the way to the end of the galaxy and it can wipe out all of the satellite communications, it can wipe out life on planets, it can take out all of the life of this earth if it begins to send its, I don't know how you describe its power. They call solar flare, they call it a solar storm, magnitude four, five, six if they begin to, if the sun begins to send its power upon the earth, it can burn all of the inhabitants of the earth. Oh, that's why Sayyidina Yusuf described that Allah put me in command of the sun and the moon and the eleven planets. And that was from Surat Al Yusuf but its reality when we described in Surat Al Qadr. That this station of power for our understanding only for our galaxy is the importance of the sun. What commands come from that, the Ruh wa Malaika, the Muhammadan representative and the angels that fulfill the command of the Muhammadan representative that commands that station. And they don't know yet but they will know inshaAllah someday that that sun was created by the annihilation in the black hole into the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad He is the star maker. Mahi dunub wa muhi al qulub That which he annihilates all, all and bring it to its reality of light. So when they find those Muhammadan haqqaiqs those are the black holes within this universe and that anything that enter into that hole it will come out into a reality of baqa, it will lose its mass and enter into the oceans of eternal light and as a result it manifests as a star. It's all from ishq and love and Muhammad. Not the physical love people are confusing from the material world but the essence in which Allah inshaAllah created this creation from this immense love. So then we get an understanding of the importance of the love for Sayyidina Muhammad It keeps the aqeedah to be correct for without that love everyone says, why well, we don't just talk about the love of Allah It is that love. If you don't mention the Muhammadan haqqaiqs then you become from those who think you became one with Allah or that you will become one with Allah How all these people became both parast and idol worshippers and mushriqeen, how they called their, their saints to be gods, how they called something to be a god. That was the danger. When you don't put creation in front of you and that your only way is to enter into the reality of the most purified station of creation called Muhammadun Rasulullah and that Prophet knows how to keep the barrier, the distance and the adab from saying that he is one with Allah astaghfirullah. As a result of the firmness in that understanding 
then you're kept within the barrier of entering in. The most you can enter in is into the haqqaiqs of Muhammadur Rasulullah keeping us in the perfect tawheed of La ilaha illallah which means nothing is there with it. And all that other than that is Muhammadun Rasulullah When they didn't have that they thought they were entering into oneness with the Divine and then communities afterwards would describe them that who were they, what were they, how did they know, I said, I don't know but they became one with the God and then they became called gods, astaghfirullah. And that's how their confusion and their belief and their aqeedah had corrupted their truth. And that's why the perfected truth is the Muhammadan truth, that nothing is one with Allah Allah is with Allah And for our ascension and our realities into the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah So by this love, this ishq, imagine the power of each of these mawlid. The power of the actual birth, the power of celebrating the birth, the power of salawats. That every difficulty you have there is a salawat for that. So imagine then when they're teaching all these essences, all these realities of lights, all of the universes and paradises, all of the samai wal ard, from the heavens to the earths all are under that command. Then imagine the power of making salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad we pray that Allah dress us, bless us and expand our heart for understanding. Anyone confused with their head you probably have to watch a couple more times so that you don't rush to judgment or think something else was said. And the words are chosen to be very, very precise and delicate as to not move left and right in the wrong understanding inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzata ma yasifoon. Wa salaam ila al-mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa, bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.